watchword for the week is from Psalm 107, verse 1. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Welcome to the weekly online worship service of the Yerkesville, Janaden, Hutton, and Fry's Valley Moravian congregations. I'm Pastor Dave Geyer, and it's good to have you with us as we worship together. Today is Sunday, June 23rd, 2024, the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. And today we welcome Sister Connie Kinsey, who will be helping lead our service today. And Connie will be bringing us our message, which she's entitled, Why Are You Afraid? And we're grateful to Connie for her help today. One announcement I would highlight, also a prayer concern. Uh, this coming week, representatives from Moravian congregations from Ohio all the way to the East Coast will be gathering together for our Eastern District Synod. Eastern District Synod takes place every four years, and this is a gathering where Moravians from these areas come together to worship, to strengthen our ties, and also to do the business of the district. We will be represented at this Eastern District Synod from, by representatives from Fry's Valley, which will be Shauna Angel representing the congregation, and also Gina Green as a youth delegate, from Janaden Hutton, Cheryl Foote and Bob Geiger will be attending, and from Yorksville, Carolyn Davis will be attending, and of course, I will be attending as well. And Marie Coates, who's a member of the Janaden Hutton congregation, has been the chair of the planning committee and hard at work for a very long time as we anticipate this synod. Also, our ministry partnership has been invited to lead the opening worship service of synod. And for all these reasons and more, we would welcome your prayers this coming week for God's presence, God's leading, God's guidance in the midst of our upcoming Eastern District Synod. And now let us quiet our hearts as Connie leads us in our opening prayer. Please pray with me. Dear Father, be with each of us as we worship you today. Open our hearts that we may feel your love and leading in the words and the music that we share. Thank you for loving each of us. In Jesus' name, amen.
please pray with me? Father God, on this day, we are grateful for the sunshine and the warm weather and the joy of family and the gifts we are given. As we are grateful, some also mourn. Please keep those who have lost loved ones close to you that they may feel the comfort you provide. We also pray for those who need healing of mind and body and spirit, those in war torn areas of our world. Lord, we also pray for those who are heading to Synod. We ask that you be the guiding force. We ask for God's speed as our brothers and sisters, sisters travel from near and far. As we contemplate the other joys and needs, we will join our voices praying the prayer that you taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today's New Testament reading comes from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind him, they took him along just as he was on the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet! Be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Our Old Testament reading today comes from Psalm 107 verses 1 through 3 and 23 through 32. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Some went out in sea and ships, they were merchants on mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord, his wonderful deeds in the deep. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted high the waves. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. In their peril, their courage melted away. They reeled and staggered like drunkards. They were at their wits end. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad when it grew calm, and he guided them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds of mankind. Let them exalt him in the assembly of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. God bless the reading and hearing of this word. Hello, children of God. I have a very exciting and interesting story I want to share with you about something Jesus did. But first, I want you to help me with a little something to be part of the tale. When I give you this signal, I want you to make a whole bunch of noise, okay? But when I give this signal, that means stop and be quiet right now. Do you think you can do that? Let's give it a try. Ready? All right, let's try it again. Ready?
Very good. All right. That was pretty good. Well, what if you could do that with other things in your life? Like, what if you could do that with the weather? Want some rain? Want the rain to stop? Believe it or not, that's exactly what Jesus did in today's gospel story. Jesus and his disciples went out on a boat and a storm picked up. These guys were fishermen and they were used to being on water in bad weather. But this storm really scared them. The waves were so high that they were afraid the boat would tip over and they would drown. Through all of this, do you know where Jesus was? He was asleep. Can you believe that? He was just snoozing away in the boat. Let's make some snoring sounds for Jesus. Well, the disciples woke him up and asked for help. Jesus got up and he told the waves, be still. And guess what? It was completely calm. The storm was gone. The disciples were amazed that Jesus had that kind of power. You know, this story demonstrates Jesus's power in our lives too. Do you ever feel worried or scared? Jesus cares. He is in control, even when it might seem like he's asleep in the boat. Let's make our own little storm here. So, if this is you, sometimes things happen that make you feel anxious or frightened and kind of stir up your emotions like a storm. But, If we pray and put our trust in Jesus, his power can calm our hearts and settle our nervous minds. And he brings peace and calms the worries that threaten us. If Jesus can control the weather by just a simple command, we can be confident that he can have power over our fears if we ask him for help, hope, or guidance. When things are rough, Remember, he is in the boat with us. Trust in him for strength and he will calm the storms of our lives. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for being in control. You can calm the stormy sea and make me calm too. Thank you for taking care of me. Help me to trust in you for all things. Thank you for your love. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Take me to the rock. Take me to the rock. Take me to the rock. That is higher than I. Take me to the rock. Take me to the rock. Take me to the rock that is high as a night. Hear my cry, hear my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I call to you. When I'm overwhelmed, you have been a shelter for me, yes, a strong tower from. Take me to, take me to the rock. Take it.
me to, take me to the rock. Take me to the rock, yeah. Take me to the rock. That is higher than. Let's please begin with prayer. Dear Father, may these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, my Lord, my rock, and my redeemer. Amen. The verses I chose from the lectionary for today talk about being delivered from storms. One, the first, is an Old Testament reading from Psalms 107, which was written around 1000 BC, presumably by King David. The selection begins with the verses of one through three and then skips to 23. The first verses tell us to thank the Lord for saving us through different afflictions. Now I had to wonder, what happened in verses four through 22? Were they different afflictions? So here is what happened. In each stanza, a new affliction was described. Those affected cried out to the Lord and he saved them. Some were hungry and lost, wandering in the desert. They cried to the Lord and he gave them food, water, and a place, to say, a place to settle. That sounded a lot like the exodus from Egypt, 
which would have happened before the psalm was written. Some sat in darkness because they rebelled against God's plan. When they cried out to the Lord, he saved them from their distress. Some were near death, loathing all food. And he sent out his word and healed them. He rescued them from their grave. In each of these special healings, the author encourages the afflicted to give thanks for the Lord, to the Lord for his unfailing love and wonderful deeds. Through every bad situation, no matter who was at fault, when they called on the Lord, he saved them. That takes us to the adventure at sea, which parallels the sea adventures described in Mark. The people on the boat panicked and God quieted the storm with a whisper. The New Testament scripture comes from the Gospel of Mark, recorded before 40 AD by Mark, a Gentile Christian and companion of Peter. The setting is during Jesus's ministry. Looking at the two texts together and their timelines, God has been quieting storms with a whisper for over a thousand years. What struck me about the Mark scripture was Jesus's words after he calmed the storm. Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? What had the disciples seen Jesus do that made him think they should have developed a stronger faith than they had? Well, one, if they were Jews, they would have had the Psalms and the other tellings of God's power and love. Two, each of them had the story of how they were called to be a disciple. And as I read the earlier chapters in Mark to see what they had seen before the event, Mark tells us about the baptism of Jesus, where a voice from heaven acknowledged Jesus as the Son of God. Satan's testing Jesus in the wilderness. Jesus silencing and driving demons out of people. Jesus healing a leper and a paraplegic. Jesus choosing his disciples, challenging the Pharisees, and teaching the crowds with parables. This is what they experienced with Jesus before the storm at sea, yet they were afraid. So what about us? Have we experienced enough of God's love and power to not panic in our storm? Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Jesus asked tough questions for us to think about, but first he saves us. He silences the storm. Let me share one of my fears. I am afraid of heights. It's been a lifelong long fear of heights. I don't remember riding on a Ferris wheel as a kid. I remember riding one once with my husband early in our relationship. I don't remember too much stress from that one, though I didn't ride a Ferris wheel with him again. Fast forward a decade to when my young daughter wants to ride the Ferris wheel. And of course, mom took her. The ride started out okay as we moved up. Then it stopped at the top with a jerk that made our car sway. At first I played it cool, being brave for my daughter, but then she moved and made the car sway more and I was in panic. I admonished her not to move a muscle and to hold on to the bar. We lived through the next few starts and stops as the operator let people off the ride below us. When we were about halfway down, I started yelling to the operator that I needed to get off. He let us off and my daughter got to tell everybody about her cowardly mother. Fast forward another decade, the three kids and I were at the state fair and the kids wanted to ride the ski lift 
to get back toward the parking lot. It wasn't as high as the Ferris wheel, and I'd ridden something like it at Disney when I was in high school without fear, so I said, why not? We couldn't all ride together, so my oldest and youngest rode in the first car, and the ornery one rode with me. We hadn't gone far when I noticed that the two in front of me were not taking the danger of the situation seriously. They were rocking their car and turning their heads and twisting their upper bodies to look back at me. I yelled at them to face forward and sit still. They either didn't hear me or pretended not to hear me. Then my seatmate started to move about, laughing at the rocking of our car, and my panic took a hold. He was told to sit perfectly still, and I found a focal point and did cheap, deep chest breathing for the rest of the ride. Several years later, Hubby and I went to a wine fest with friends. One of the planned activities was to ride a ski lift up a hill and come down on a slide. I shared with my friend that I was afraid and she went with me. We talked all our way, focusing on scenery and before I knew it, we were safe at the top. Scary, but not too scary. My next adventure with heights came on a Jamaican vacation with my then adult daughter. It was a zip line activity across the rainforest. I thought that if I was too afraid, I'd quit. I didn't realize that there was no way to quit once you began. We were in a group and I shared that I didn't like heights, so the group cheered me on. After the first zip across the forest, my cheering section was proud of me. Wasn't it beautiful, they asked. I didn't know. I had my eyes closed and I was praying I didn't die. With their encouragement, I did open my eyes and it was beautiful. And I was able to pray just fine with my eyes open. I am still uncomfortable with heights. But over time and experience, my fears have quieted. A few years ago, my daughter decided to get married on a mountaintop in Montana. The way to get to the top was a ski lift. I was assured that the resort also had an enclosed lift, but if I rode the open lift, I could go up the mountain with my daughter. I rode with my daughter and it was a beautiful moment. I can talk and laugh about this fear Many of us can laugh at some of our fears, but fears that we can't laugh about, such as a cancer diagnosis, the loss of a loved one, a sick child, a loss of status in the eyes of people we love and respect, these are the ones that have us screaming out in agony to God, as his disciples did in that boat on the Sea of Galilee. It is nothing, is it nothing to you that we are going down? They said with fear. We say with fear. That's when we have to trust in the one who can quiet the storm with a whisper. That's when we need to apply the faith that we've been developing by so many things feared that turned out okay. We will each have storms times of struggle and fear, when our lives or loved ones are in peril. But we will not be alone. He will be with us, quieting our storms. I'd like to close with a poem by Anne Johnson Flint. God has not promised us skies always blue, flowers strewn pathways all our lives through, God has not promised sun without rain, joy without sorrow, peace without pain. But God has promised strength for each day, rest for the labor, light for the way, grace for our trials, help from above, unfailing sympathy, undying love.
Amen. And now, as we face the storms of our lives, remind us that you are always with us. Help us to keep our faith intact and rely on your power and love. Amen. Thank you.